take care of, are you? No, Dr. Koenig, I'm taking care of myself, just like you said. Mm. Oh, Miss Sheridan. Yes, Doctor. Will you get the gentleman who is waiting outside, please? And uh, don't forget what I told you. Yes, Doctor. I have a surprise for you this morning. I have brought you a lawyer, a friend of mine, who is going to help your husband. But, Dr. Koenig, we've got a lawyer already. Oh, but this is a very clever lawyer with a big reputation. But I don't think we have enough money for a big lawyer like that. Now, don't you worry about that. Mrs. Martin and I have been a practicing physician for 30 years, and I've seen a great many sides of life. But I've rarely seen such a case of brutality and injustice. Now, I'd be ashamed of myself as a man if I didn't do all I could to help your husband. Who's this? Consulting physician. Uh -huh. All right. Ah, here we are. Mrs. Martin, this is Mr. Berger. Mr. Martin, now I will leave you. Take care of this little girl for me. And remember, Berger. Mr. Martin? Dr. Koenig told me as much as he knows about this case. And some of it I'm already familiar from the newspapers. But there's some question I want to ask you. Some little details I want to work out. Now, about what time were you taken down to headquarters? About three o'clock in the afternoon. Three o'clock in the afternoon. Edward Martin, age 23, white, occupation bellboy. Admitted to Hall 2, room 202 at 3 a.m. October 12th. Hospital call received at 2.30 a.m. from county jail. A patient admitted by Holmes Ambulance, apparently suffering from injuries received from a blunt instrument. Patient in poor condition at time of entrance to hospital. Were you in attendance on the ambulance which picked up Mr. Martin? Yes. Where did you find him? In a private room at the jail, lying unconscious on a table. Was there anyone else there? Yes, there was Assistant District Attorney Wade and some detectives. Well, did he explain 